Mm -hmm. All right, looks like we're alive. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Zosin session. How about that? So uh, let's make a little bit of an announcement uh, to the Discord server about, um, you know, already started stream. Uh, so red circle live on Twitch. So what are we doing uh, today? Making programming language. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. That is precisely what we're doing today. Twitch tv slash zozin so for the past like several days i would say maybe even for the past week we've been developing uh, a very simple stack based programming language which is called porth and uh it's basically a fourth implemented in python that's why it's called porth you can find the source code of this thing in the description i'm gonna put it uh right into the description just for you Gia, hello, welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, source code uh, is going to be available here, and for everyone in the chat, you can find this uh, entire thing in here. I do hello, welcome everyone. How are you guys doing? So um, let's take a look at what we've got so far. Mm -mm -mm. Let's take a look at what we've got. I need to fetch the latest changes. So before I do so, I think I want to uh, clean everything. Right, and I'm going to just fetch everything. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So merge origin master. So I actually refactored things a little bit. Um, specifically, I created a test folder where I put all of the test programs. Um, right, so there is like a basic uh, arithmetic test. There is a condition tests. Uh, and also there is a loops test, right? And I also off screen edit uh, comments, right? So now you can have comments. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have an Emacs mode that would show me that. So maybe I can use the C mode. Uh, it will highlight. I don't know. It, it kind of feels like a Ruby, if you know what I'm talking about. So might as well actually change it. To, yeah, yeah, there we go. So, but, but unfortunately, Ruby doesn't have like a C style comments. Uh, does anyone know what has a C style comments and also end? Uh, as a keyword, right? So maybe something like Pascal. <laughs> yeah, Bas Pascal works. Uh, Pascal seems to be working, uh, right? Because uh, the latest versions of Pascal, they do have the uh, C style comments, right? And the cool thing about this language is that uh, it's um, it's compilable, right? It compiles to native assembly code, right? So I can do the following thing. I can say, please compile the uh, loops example. And as you can see, it will generate the assembly file. Then it will compile that assembly file and then link it, link it in, into the final executable. And if I try to run this final executable, right, it will just, you know, do the looping and do the iteration. And you can even uh, check check how this assembly looks like uh, right there we go so here's the generated assembly and it was generated from that code from this code right so we straight up generated a native assembly code from this thing uh, using Python how about that doesn't it sound exi exciting I think it sounds exciting I think it's pretty pal what do you guys think mm -mm -mm -mm. and one thing we still don't have I believe is an ability to access memory right arbitrary access to the memory so uh, all of the operations like in fourth are done by the stack so we have an operand stack and you can do operations on that stack but we want to be able to actually have an access to the to the memory address right to, to, the, to the memory space i would say uh so yeah and that's precisely what we're going to be working today are we adding comments today we already added them uh, so it wasn't like I added comments off screen because um, it was very trivial to add them. Uh, I can even show you what it took to uh, add the comments to this entire language. So you need to go to uh, Alexa or Lex file, right? So here's the function. And this is literally just changing this, right? So this was the original code without the support of the comments. And I just added this. And now the language supports the comments. So <laughs> I decided that, well, it's, it's kind of pointless to do that on the stream. It's just like, it's such a trivial change. Um, yeah. So essentially what it's doing, right, uh, you have some code, right, and you can have comments that basically uh, look like this or look like this. 
And essentially what this change does, it takes the line and splits it by the comment token, effectively removing everything after the end of it. Uh, and th that's it. So <laughs> there's nothing much to say. So it will break when we introduce the string literals, but we don't have string literals yet, so it's not a problem. Um, yeah, for, for now it works and it gives us the ability to have comments in the language. So and yeah so uh, we have more important features to be fair we have more important features the more important features i already mentioned is uh arbitrary access to the memory right we want to be able to read and write from the memory <sighs> this is the language you're making in python yes this is the language i'm making in python this is the source code you can find uh the source code in uh in this repo and if you're in the chat uh here is the link right here is the link. Uh, everything is under MIT, and I also try to document as much as possible. So um, in a readme, I put a lot of information about the language and how to use it and stuff like that. So hopefully it's going to be useful. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, Reaper Berry. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, well, everyone. Uh, so yes, yes, yes. So how are we going to be accessing the, uh, accessing the memory? So this is a very good question. I just watched the vote for Perth on YouTube. Perth, <laughs> it's Porth. Uh, as far as I know, Porth is some sort of like a, a town in, yeah, a town in Europe or something like that. So uh, maybe not, maybe it's not Europe. I'm not sure. Looks like Europe. Uh, 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 uh. So County Board of, I didn't even know what that is. What is that? Uh, Wales. Okay, it's well. I mean, it's it's not it's not Europe anymore. <laughs> so yeah, um, it used to be. Um, anyway, so how are we going to be accessing the um, the memory? So my idea is that uh, you would push uh, a pointer onto the stack, right, and then you would push some sort of a value that you want to write by that pointer. And then you would say um, write eight, right? And uh, that will basically write a uh, byte within value 69 to an address pointed by that, by that pointer. So, but, but here's an interesting thing. How do you know where exactly can you write? How do you know that? Like you can try to do like uh, explicit addresses and stuff like that, uh, right? But you know, uh, in the current like in the modern runtimes, you never know where you can or cannot write, and also where does the uh, data segment start? And also there is such thing as ASLR. Uh, if you guys know about it, ASLR. I think this is how it's spelled, right? Uh, so address space layout randomization. Uh, basically, it just like shuffles. And, you know stuff in the memory around for security reasons so nothing is placed uh in a, in the same location uh every time you run things so I, I don't think we can use like absolute addresses we'll need some sort of a word um that will push an address uh of the beginning of the memory of the memory to which we can write right so let's actually reserve like some sort of a buffer right uh big enough buffer uh, into which you can write things. And with this keyword, you automatically push uh, an address of the beginning of that buffer and you can read and write into that memory as much as you want. So um, I think we can start with this kind of thing um, and then we'll see what we can do else. <clears throat> so it's not particularly convenient uh, way of working with memory, but this way of working is basically going to be the basis of, um, you know, of storing data, uh, like intermediate data uh, for, for the program. And in the future, we're going to have other mechanisms that make the, uh, you know, working with memory a little bit easier, right? So this is going to be like that. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's go ahead and maybe introduce uh, this keyword. Right. Oh, and especially it's going to be interesting when uh, we're going to start simulating because we also need the simulation mode, right? So we need to be able to access the memory in a simulation mode. Uh, maybe I'm going to postpone the simulation stuff um, for now and then we'll see how we can 
how we can do that. As far as I know, Python has bytes uh, type. All right, maybe we can use bytes as the, um, you know, uh, as the memory. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So if I remember correctly, uh, let me actually see. So this is going to be, uh, I want to start Team Nux. This is going to be Team Nux, and I'm going to go into the port. Um, okay, so I forgot to save some of the stuff. Emacs created a bunch of garbage. Uh, I Python, um, right. The Python is very slow. So this is the bytes. Okay, so it does exist. And if I take a look at the type of this entire thing, it by, it's biased. And can I create something like this? Yeah, I can. So uh, the question is, can I modify the bytes? I don't think so. I think the easiest way to actually confirm that is just, just create that and maybe append something. Uh, you cannot append. Uh, what if I create something like uh, 1, 2, 3, and then x is 0, 69. Okay, so bytes is immutable. Python, uh, mutable, mutable bytes. Oh, there's byte array. Can I just straight up create byte array? Oh, okay, I can. So uh, can I do something like, all right, can I modify this entire thing? 69. And there we go. So it does work. All right. So we can use byte array as the memory uh, for the simulation mode, right? So uh, what else do you have in a byte array? This is actually pretty cool. I didn't know that such thing exists. Um, so add a lock. You can return number of bytes actually allocated. Contains uh, two, 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 le return self value. It would be kind of cool if I was able to, for example, read. 8 bytes as a single 64-bit integer. Uh, I wonder if it's possible even. So there's ends width, extend, uh, hex. This is not particularly what I want. Insert, mm -mm, mm -mm. join, lower, partition. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I don't really find anything uh that looks like working with bytes uh, i want something similar to you know byte array uh in javascript if you know what i'm talking about right so there's upper z field from hex nah there's nothing oh well, we can do that manually okay so it's not that big of a deal it's just like i can read the uh eight bytes and just compose a 64 bit integer out of them it's just not that big of a deal and i can also simulate like a uh, little engine and stuff like that uh, completely myself i don't think it's that big of a deal uh, can you recommend compiler construction book? Uh, everyone is recommending uh, crafting compilers. Uh, crafting compilers, I think. Um, crafting interpreters. Crafting interpreters. Uh, so these days, everyone is recommending that book. But to be honest, I personally never read that book. Right, I never read that book. So I cannot recommend it myself personally but i know a lot of uh, people who i respect that do recommend this book so i recommend it as well so uh yeah and i'm gonna also put that in the description for anyone who's uh watching on youtube crafting crafting interpreter interpreters there we go and transitive recommendation yeah exactly mm -mm -mm -mm. So, two, 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 two. okay. <sighs> alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So, uh, let's start with introducing the mem thingy. Right, maybe I'm gonna go into the readme. And I have a reference, a uh, language reference in here uh, for all of the operations that we add. So, I'm trying to get into the habit of uh, adding a new operation for the language and just documenting it immediately uh, so I don't forget to document it, right? So um, I'm gonna do something like memory, memory, I'll just call it memory. And uh, the word that we're gonna introduce is gonna be called memory, like mem. Um, so what does it do? Uh, pushes the beginning, uh, the address of the beginning of the memory of the memory um, onto this stack right so that's basically what it does um, 
So pushes pushes the address of the beginning of the memory uh, where you can read and uh, write mm, onto the stack. We don't really know the uh, the size of that memory, but you can basically assume that it's going to be infinite, right? And maybe the size of that memory is going to be controlled by um, you know by a compiler flag of some sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's go ahead and just introduce this entire stuff. Um, so this is going to be op mem, and this is iota. Um, and I'm going to start by uh, just trying to compile this entire stuff. So test uh, zero 03 port, and uh, I recently also added a, a minus r flag. Uh, to the compilation uh, subprogram worth uh, com. I think I can do something like help, right? So essentially, it will not only compile the program but instantly run it, right? So compilation minus r test uh, tests zero, zero 03 uh, fourth. There we go. And um, as you can see, it fails uh, right away because we edit a new operation. Uh, so we're gonna have 13 of those things. Mm, if word equal mem, and we return a new operation. The type of that operation is going to be mem, and location is gonna be log. And location is basically a triple, uh, a triple of file path, row, and column. And we use this location for error reporting and stuff like that, right? So basically, there is a, like a little bit of a description at the top of the file of like basic terminology um, within the code base. So we consider a program uh, a list of operation, a list of ops. Op, a single operation, is a dictionary with the following possible fields. Uh, the type, it's basically one of those things like push, plus, minus, like basically everything that def defined in here. Uh, location is the location within the file. It's a triple file path, row, and column. Uh, value, it's only available for the push. It basically tells what value to push onto the stack. And jump is the address where to jump when you execute this instruction. It's needed for cross-referencing between if, else, while blocks and stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically what it means. Ralph, thank you so much for 18 months. The gramming for pros continues to dinko. Thank you, thank you so much for 18 months of tier 1 subscription, I really appreciate it. And welcome to our epic Python club, how about that? Mm -hmm. But you didn't expect that shit to happen. Alright, so we, we continue uh, adding support for this entire thing, and uh, now it fails, as far as I can tell, in here. So now we're cross-referencing uh, cross everything, so I don't think memory introduces anything that needs to be cross-referenced, so I'm going to just increment this entire thing and continue. So, for the compilation, okay, this one is really interesting. Um, uh, this really interesting. Mm, I think in the generated assembly, right, in the generated assembly, we can effectively uh, just add uh, a segment data, right? Or maybe even better, a segment BSS, right? Because I think we're gonna uh, like allocate not initialize memory. Uh, as far as I know, what's the difference between data and BSS segment? Do, do you guys know? So BSS is considered not initialized data. So I suppose it's the data that doesn't take any memory in the actual file, in an actual executable, if you know what I'm talking about. We can probably even sort of confirm that somehow. Uh, so yeah, essentially if I allocate some sort of a buffer in here and I do resp b and I allocate 69 kilobytes, right, these 69 kilobytes are not going to be included in the actual executable file, but in the runtime, uh, the, I suppose, operating system will al allocate 69 kilobytes and just, you know, set it uninitialized so the program can use it. Whereas in, in case of a data segment, right, you can't even use such operation as a rest B, you have to use DB and you have to sp specifically say what kind of bytes you want in here. And those bytes will become the part of the executable. I think, I think this is the difference uh, between BSS and data segment, right? If I understood correctly. Uh, and in our case, I think we want to just pre-allocate the buffer in, within the BSS section. Mm, I think that's what we want to do. 
Cinder Tube Worm, what's up? Hello, hello. Mm. Deep Singularity, hello. Welcome, everyone. How are you guys doing? Uh, so, yeah, I think our memory is basically going to be this, right? So, this is going to be Ash. Ah, it's going to be memory, right? And then, when you try to push uh, the address to the beginning of the memory, uh, we're essentially pushing the address to mem, right? We essentially push an address to mem. So let me take a look. Uh, let's take a look at the operation. L if op type equal op mem, uh, and then essentially what we're gonna do in here is uh, just document that this is a mem operation. This is a mem operation. And uh, I'm going to do something like push. Mem. But that is not going to work uh, because at the end we'll have to create this segment, right? So out right uh, segment um, BSS. So this is the new line. Did I forget the new line again? Yes, I did in fact forget uh, a new line. And I think I need to use double quotes in here. I think. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but for the sake of consistency, I think I'm going to use the the double quotes in here. Uh, so out right, this is going to be memory, uh, res bb, and uh, we need to put some sort of a number in here. Uh, and Matthews F777, thank you so much for 33 months. 30, 30 Holy shit. It's such a long support. Thank you so much for such an enormous, gigantous. Is that even the word? Support uh, of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic uh, assembly club. Um, so let's actually have something like a memory capacity, right? So this is going to be mem capacity. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to just define this some way here. Um, mem capacity, uh, 640 kilobytes. By the way, can I use like string literals like this uh, in Python? I don't even know. Um, Oh yeah, I can. Holy shit, finally a good language. All right, that's actually pretty cool. Um, should be enough uh, for everyone. Right, should be enough for everyone. Uh, mem capacity, all right. So uh, let me see. Uh, test, uh, and we probably want to create something like uh, four uh, memory ports. And essentially what we're going to do, we're going to just do mem. And there's nothing much we can do with the memory right now. We can only push the memory address onto the stack. The only thing we can do, we can try to print it, right? So we can put a dot in here and it will print it, I suppose. Uh, all right, so do we have anything else? Okay, so everything seems to be compiling and let's see uh, where the memory address begins. Okay, so this is the address of the memory of the BSS section. As far as I know, it should be different every time we run it. It's not actually different, look at that. Hmm. I wonder why. I really know nothing about ASLR, but isn't SLR, ASLR supposed to put this section like in different locations in the memory, specifically BSS section? Oh, wait. Well, I mean, you can modify BSS site. Like, this is really strange. Like, is that because it's not executable or something like that? I, I'm really confused. Why is it not in a different place all the time? Huh. I don't know. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the uh, generated assembly, right? So, so here is the memory, and we push the uh, memory address in there. Uh, I hope it pushes the actual address, right? I really hope so, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm -mm, I'm not 100% sure. We can try to GDB this entire stuff and see if the address of the mem is actually there. Uh, so let's actually do it like that. It's going to be gdb um, tests 04 uh, memory. And we're going to break at start. And I'm going to just run this entire thing. Uh, maybe I'm going to also enable the assembly layout. Uh, and can I print mem um, as a known typecast? OK, so I'm going to cast it to void star and it points at zero, which is rather strange. Uh, I suppose I need to take... Okay, so it's a four... Uh-huh. Can I print it as 
maybe uh, long long int rather okay this looks like yeah this looks like it so I don't think there's any problems in here yeah okay so apparently it is at the same place SLR disabled okay maybe SLR is disabled in my machine who knows uh, so maybe I got hacked is there any way to know if ASLR is disabled? Uh, Linux check if ASLR uh, enabled. Is there any way? Uh, check if SLR is activated on Linux. Uh, two, 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 two. Cat random SVA space. Okay. Uh, let me take a look at that in here. So it says that it's two, whatever is that supposed to mean? Right. Um, does it mean that it's randomized or something? Uh, it's a method enabled uh, activate ASLR. Okay, so to activate it, you have to put zero in here. Uh, I can try to do that. Uh, permission denied. Okay, so I can try to do that with sudo. Uh, can, I, can I do that? Uh, probably not. Maybe I can do something like this. Uh -huh. Okay, so if I cut this entire shit now, uh, it is zero. And if I try to run the program after that, uh, for memory, uh, it's still at the same place. So maybe SLR has nothing to do uh, with BSS section. So I'm really surprised. So I don't know. I also have a very old, um, you know, kernel. Executing random control in the net. Yeah, that was a bad idea. And now my entire machine is compromised, but it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Um, anyway, so we have an access to the memory, but we have no way to read or write uh, into that memory. So I think I'm gonna just right away uh, copy everything, uh, commit everything, and we're gonna come up with a way to access all of that. All right. Mm -mm. So you think it's gonna be one, but what? two means actually so because that was actually rather strange mm, it's, a, it's a regular executable so it does not oh god damn it gee i didn't read the i didn't read the file name i, I thought you okay all right because i trust you unconditionally um all right so let's continue. Um, introduce um, mem key, uh, operation. Um, let's push that right into the repo. Um, <sighs> okay, so um, I want to be able to. I suppose read something uh, from a particular address, right? Something like mem, and then uh, read eight, and it will read the byte at that specific address, or memory sixty nine. Actually, not read, uh, but rather load, right? And uh, something like store eight, and it will store sixty nine at uh, that specific address. But I think uh, this sort of syntax is a little bit over bloated for what you, uh, what I'm trying to do. Um, I really like the idea of using like dot um, actually hmm, dot for maybe comma for reading the thing and dot for writing a thing how about that basically the same as in a brain fuck uh, so brain uh, fuck so in the brain fact there's two operations uh, dot and comma and dot uh, writes the current memory into the standard output yeah output the byte at the data pointer and uh, comma accept byte of the input so we can use the same sort of notation right so you can read from the memory with the comma and write into the memory with the dot so the problem is that dot is already taken dot is a dump operation that dumps the top of the stack uh, so and what i'm thinking is what I'm thinking is uh, maybe I need to rename dot to just dump because the dump operation is 
a debug function anyway, right? It's a debug function anyway, so um, I think it's fine to just call it uh, dump, right? And furthermore, um, since uh, when the language becomes more mature enough, it's not going to be a built-in thing anymore. It's going to be implemented from scratch. Um, so, um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. The next step is going to be essentially taking the dump and renaming it from dot to, uh, to dump. Right, so let me go ahead and do that. So this is going to dump. This is going to be just dump. And I think that's the only thing I need to do in here, hopefully. So let's run the test. By the way, I also wrote like a simple script that runs the tests. So it iterates uh, through everything within this folder and just uh, tries to compile it and compare the output of the compiled version and simulated version. So right now it's actually rather interesting because we don't support memory access in the simulated version. So it's not going to do anything, unfortunately. So for now, I think I'm gonna remove the memory thingy, right, because it's like, but we don't support that in the, in the simulated version yet. Uh, but I just wanna test if everything works correctly. Okay, so, um, I think broke, uh, returned non-zero. This is because, uh, okay, uh -huh, uh -huh. but it didn't print anything. I was hoping that it will print at least the error, but it didn't print anything, which is kind of kind of sad. So there is a problem with this script. Um, it never actually prints. Uh, so maybe I'm gonna actually do it with myself. So it's been fourth simulate. Tests zero one port. Uh, not enough argument for to format the string. What is going on? Uh, not enough arguments. Uh huh. So and in here. Mm -mm. So. Goddamn. And lock is. Uh huh. File path row column. And then error. This is what I wanted to do. Okay, can I do it? Okay, so finally. Yeah, this is what I wanted to achieve, right? I wanted to see an error that complains about the dot, so I can replace the dot with dump. That's what I was trying to achieve the whole time. <laughs> uh, right, so the next thing. Exhaustive handling for the operations. Uh, uh -huh. uh, simulate program. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know what, I think I'm gonna actually add memory support for this thing, but I'm gonna put a, a to-do in here because it's really unclear how to implement that. So this is gonna be the type, and if it's equal to opmem, we're gonna do assert false, uh, not implemented yet. All right, so this is gonna go like this. Ah, there we go. Seems to be working, seems to be twerking. Uh, all right, so we simulated everything. What about the second thing in here? Okay, so now we need to replace dots with dump yet again. Uh, right, there we go. And what about the this one, fourth? And here we're gonna do the same thing. This is gonna be just the dump. Dupe dump, dupe dump. Cool. Uh, so, and let me do the... The compilation I actually commit. Let me do the commit. Um, <clears throat> so this is this thing. Stub mem implementation for uh, the simulation. Simulation for the simulation. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Temporarily remove. Um, fourth test, test case, uh, since it's not uh, working in the simulation anyway. Right, so this is going to be that. Uh, and here, what we did, um, <clears throat> so here we fixed error reporting, uh, fix error reporting on unknown, unknown token. Right. And uh, rename dot to dump. There we go. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. <clears throat> mm. Okay. 
so uh, now we need to introduce all of the like read and write operations, right? Um, or load and store. Um, so for now, we're going to only load and store single bytes. In the future, we're going to support loading and storing 64 bits and maybe arbitrary things. But for now, it's going to be only um, bytes, right? So we're going to have op uh, load, right? Iota and store. And all of that is going to work only for a single byte. Only for a single byte. And uh, let's go ahead and maybe try to compile, um, try to compile the, the entire thing. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. So this is going to be four. Uh, actually, we, we added two of them, so it has to be 15, right? It has to be 15. So uh, dot is um, essentially storing into the memory. So it's going to be return uh, type op store at the location lock, right? Uh, word is comma, right? Return uh -huh, type op load at the location lock. Uh -huh. Next one cross-referencing. So the loading and storing does not affect cross-referencing, so I'm just going to increment it to 15 and continue. Uh, compilation is going to be affected by uh, loading and storing, right? We have to explicitly work with this entire stuff. All right, so this one is going to be very interesting. So op uh, type and op load, right? And uh, assert false, uh, not implemented. Uh, L if op type uh, op type op uh, store assert false uh, not implemented. Okay, so when we are loading, uh, think at a particular address, right? We need to know the address. So uh, let's go ahead and pop the address from the stack. The, the address is located on the stack. Um, so load, 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 it's a comma, right? Mm, out, right. Pop rex, right? So this is where the address is located now. Mm -mm. And I wonder, can I just uh, now move BL rex? Bytes. I, I think I don't even have to specify that it's a byte, right? Nazem will see that I'm trying to load it into, uh, you know, one byte register. So it's going to automatically like write, like use a write instruction for here. Right? And I hope dereferencing like that is going to work, right? So that's basically what we're doing in here. And then I'm pushing the value of RBX back. But this one is actually kind of dangerous because I think first thing I need to do is to clean RBX, right? Because I can have some garbage in, in the RBX. Uh, right? And we'll clean it first. And then I'm going to put uh, a low byte in here and then I'm going to push it back. So I hope I didn't make any mistakes in here. And this looks like writing into actually loading from the memory. Like we're loading a single byte from the memory. Uh, does anyone see any errors in the uh, like mistakes in this logic? I think I think that looks fine, right? Mm, so maybe I'm gonna actually do something like load in here. That looks fine. Okay, it would be kind of nice to also have some sort of tests. Um, that would test the data if you know what i'm talking about that would be kind of cool so let me let me see at least uh right now we can't print the memory or do anything with it but we can observe the effects of the uh, of the memory manipulation in a debugger at least so zero four memory and it's gonna be port uh so let me take a look uh, man ascii right so we're gonna um see what's the ascii code for a uh, so ASCII code for A is 97, right? All right, so that means I'm going to do memory 97 and I'm going to write that thing into the into the byte. 
Then I'm gonna shift this entire memory by one. Um, for the symmetry, I can actually do like something like this, uh, 98 to uh, 99. So essentially what I just did with this code, I've written A, B, C into the memory sequentially, right, with this code. Right, I took the memory address and I added zero in here, which is kind of useful separation, but I just did it for the symmetry. Uh, and I uh, put 97 and just wrote it there. And then I shifted by one byte and put 98 and so on and so forth. Right, that's essentially what we did in here. So that's one thing we can do. Um, yeah. So then later we can do some more interesting things. Maybe at memory zero plus I can load the entire thing and add one, right, add one, mm, right, and then I can try to store this entire thing back, um, but I'm not sure if I want to do it right now, let's see, let's see. Okay, so let's actually test the store first, right, we'll test the store first, and then we'll take a look at the load. <sighs> All right, so, uh, out, right. Right. Uh, and how are we gonna store this entire thing? So I suppose I wanna pop um, RBX. So that's the value that I wanna uh, basically store in here. Then I'm going to uh, pop Rex, which contains the address at which I need to store this entire stuff. Then I'm going to now move. Um, Mm -mm, this one is interesting, so it has to be Rex, but I'm moving it from BL, right, I'm moving it from BL, and that should be it, I think storing does not modify the stack whatsoever, uh, yeah, it does not modify the stack whatsoever, mm -mm. okay, so I, I guess we implemented, we implemented load and store operation for our language, uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Mm, let's try to compile this entire thing one more time. I forgot to increment this thing by two. Uh, and it seems to be working. Okay, so can I actually compile this one now? And it seems to be compiling. So let's take a look at the assembly, if assembly even got generated properly. Uh, right, so let me, let me see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, uh-huh. Uh -huh. So that's a lot of stuff, that's a memory push and then plus, push 97, and there we go. Okay, that's cool. So uh, let's actually test all of that in the debugger. So in the debugger, in, in that specific memory, we should see A, B, C. Mm, so uh, let's uh, go, it's gonna be tests uh, for eight memory, we're gonna break at uh, Clever Clover 7, thank you so much for tier 1 subscription, your first subscription by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic assembly club. Um, are we making our own language? Yes, we do make, uh, we are making our own language, you can find the source code of this language in here, uh, and in, we're uh, implementing it in Python, right, the language is stack based, almost like fourth. Mm -mm. Uh, really interesting how you're writing to a file to be read. You using GCC to compile? No, not really. I'm using uh, NASM to compile. So I'm generating uh, this assembly code, and then I'm using NASM uh, assembler, and I compile into object file, and then I link with the uh, with the GNU linker. So I'm using this thing. Um, so yeah, I do plan to generate native code myself, but uh, it's a little bit too much work, so we decided to just generate assembly. Um, yeah, and this is the assembly that got generated from, I suppose, yeah, from this code. Uh, Valeny, thank you, thank you so much for four months of Twitch Prime subscription. So didn't feel it. So didn't feel it. Thank you so much, and yeah. So, and we have a very simple, I think the most impressive example right now, which is in, re in reality not that impressive, but it's impressive for me, is that we can compile this, which is a simple a while loop that uh, constantly decrements a value on top of the stack that starts with 10, and we can compile it down to assembly, down to native code using the Python script. 
Right, so you can take this thing, uh, generate assembly out of that and compile it into a self-contained static program. You can do that, it's, it's not a joke, seriously. <laughs> Uh, right, so I can uh, actually demonstrate you. Uh, I can compile it. Um, tests 03 loop forth. Uh, there we go. So as you can see, it generated assembly, it compiled with NASM and linked it. And now we have um, this executable, right, which is the uh, essentially 64 bit uh, little engine executable and it's statically linked. Right? So and if you try to run this entire thing, it uh, basically generates numbers from like 10 to 1. Uh, and all of that is generated from this code using a Python script. <clears throat> Any good references for assembly programming? Uh, I usually use basically Google. Like every time I need to do something in assembly and I need to do a specific thing, I just put that thing in Google and uh, copy paste first thing that I find in there. Um, so, all right. Uh, let me let me see. So we have, yeah. What I want you to do, I want you to test how our memory access system works. Uh, so it's going to be tests uh, zero for memory. We're going to break on start, all right? And we're going to just run this entire thing. Layout assembly. Do we need registers? I don't think we need registers, but I want to take a look at the memory, right? So the thing about the memory is that we need to interpret the memory as a as a character array. So maybe I can do something like display. Okay, so let me see. Uh, uh, to, okay, so it actually saved A into the memory. Okay. And as you can see, we have ABC. So, yep. Uh, I think I did a fucky wacky. I supposed to use NI. Uh, let's actually do it one more time. We're gonna do break at start run uh, layout assembly uh, right and I'm going to take a look at memory so let's point it to the character and I'm going to display this entire thing all right so as you can see we are preparing everything and we are writing into the memory in here you see we are writing into the memory in here so after 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 this instruction we, we should see a in the memory there we go we wrote a uh, so we prepare the next character and we should see B. There we go. And then we should see C. There we go. So we wrote ABC. So uh, that's basically what we did with this simple program, right? So in here, we're just writing A, B, C. These are, these are the ASCII codes of the um, of these things. So we do have, um, you know, we can at least write into the memory. It's kind of difficult to assess if we can uh, read from the memory because you need a little bit more code. So write uh, ABC into the memory. Uh, so the next thing we can do, we can try to load those things and increment uh, each and individual character by one, because why not? Okay, so I'm gonna do mem and I'm gonna read this thing from there so that gives me the character, which then I can increment by one, right? I'm incrementing it by one. So if it was A, it will become B. And now what I need to do, actually, I need to uh, write it back into the memory. So I'll have to do something like mem. Unfortunately, to write it, mem has to come first. So which means that I have to actually do mem mem, right? Mem mem, and then something like this. Interestingly enough, uh, I'll have to repeat this entire stuff in a similar way as I did in here, uh, right? Okay, so what this thing does, it reads the byte at this address and increments it by one and then writes it back. Mm, though, here, I suppose, I can actually replace this entire thing with dupe. So I pre-calculate the address, I duplicate it, and I increment by one and I save it back. Okay, so um, increment uh, each character by one, by one, making it, making it B, C, uh, B, A, B, C, D. So we had A, B, C in the memory, and then we iterated through this entire thing and we made it B, C, D. Uh, so, yep, let's see how it works. So we'll see how it works in the 
и на дебага. Окей. So might as well actually go to here. Uh, assembly. Uh, do we have anything in here? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I think we do have stuff. We do have store at least, which is nice. Okay, let's do GDB. I'm gonna break at start. Right, I'm breaking the start, and I'm running this I think. Layout assembly. Um, let's print the memory. And this one is going to be a character to the memory. And let's keep displaying this entire thing. Uh, okay, so uh, we're writing A. Then we're writing B. Uh, keep, keep track of this thing. So this is the memory where we're writing. And then C. So we have A, B, C. So the next thing we need to do, we will increment A by 1, making it B. And... I think that, oh, first we had to read it and then we'll have to, okay. So the next thing, there we go, it came became BBC. So uh, the next thing is going to be uh, making BC. So we have BCC. And the last thing is going to be um, making CD. So it became BCD. So as you can see, we can fill up the memory with something and then we can read the memory and modify it. Right, so our program is already capable of Manipulating memory, actually. Yeah, it was that simple, apparently. Uh, so. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's actually um, commit this entire thing. Let's actually commit this entire thing. Uh, so we have a memory and um, next thing is going to be dot, which um, I think I'm going to do actually something like this. Uh, for assembly fourth. Uh, so <clears throat> um, so this is going to be that. Um, store. Um, store uh, a byte a store a given a given byte at uh, store the given byte at the uh, given address right so in this one is basically a uh, load a byte maybe a given byte at a given uh, load a byte from the given address there we go. so i also do this thing where i sort of like annotate the behavior of a particular operation you see in case of equals like i show that i pop that and pop that and then i push back the result of this operation because it's kind of like pointless to describe this thing with words if you know what i'm talking about uh it's like easier to show what's going on right uh, it's easier to show what's going on. So maybe I'm going to do a similar thing in here where I just I will annotate how it works. Uh, so I can do something like byte and I'm popping byte from the stack and then we're going to have an address and I'm popping that from an address. And then I'm just basically storing byte, uh, maybe store address byte. There we go. So that's basically what it does. Um, right. <clears throat> and in here, maybe I can also annotate that it pushes the, um, you know, memory address, right? Something like this. Uh -huh. And here we do address pop, uh, and then we load uh, a byte uh, by that address, by that specific address, and then I push that byte back into the stack. So I think this is a pretty good way of documenting documenting these operations, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So you just I just show uh, what they're doing, right? So you pop address from here, you load address into the byte, and you push that byte back into the into the stack. Uh, so mm, to to do to all right. So we have a section for the memory. Uh, so this is a control flow, and uh, yep yep yep. Mm. All right. 
Um, <laughs> add support for loading and storing bytes uh, from uh, into the memory right and i'm going to push that right into the repo so unfortunately this is not going to work in a simulation so but we can try to implement that in a simulation should be feasible actually yeah let's go ahead and try to do that um so i'm gonna do simulate and as you can see in the simulation it just says that well we, we do not support that so the thing that we'll have to uh, implement in here is op uh, type equal op load right and assert false uh, not implemented uh, yet L if op type op uh, st store I think I think this is store and then false not implemented yet there we go and uh, also I have to increment this 13 by 2 so this is going to be 15 uh, all right so yeah we cannot do mem uh, so to simulate the program we have to simulate the stack right so now we introduce the memory so let's actually go ahead and do the following thing the memory is going to be byte array and i wonder how can i create a byte array of a particular capacity so this is actually very interesting um not man byte array help uh, byte array um so bytes or buffer muted to copy bytes array okay can i just do something like 69 right so okay so i can do that this is actually perfect i can just use max uh, mem capacity in here uh, and there we go i just like generated the memory um that's actually pretty cool um all right and the address the pointer in this particular case is going to be the index within this byte array right it's going to be the index which means to implement mem uh right to implement mem what we have to do we have to just push uh zero at the stack because the beginning of that memory is going to be zero right in the compilation mode the, uh, this is going to be the address of the uh, bss section but in the simulation it's basically the first index of the memory that we simulated um all right so load <clears throat> Mm, so the first thing we have to do, I might as well actually take a look at that stuff. Right, so we're popping an address, stack pop. Right, and then I take the memory and I essentially push, uh, actually not push, but append this thing in here. There we go. So yeah. This is actually a precise translation uh, of this thing. I might as well even do it like this. Byte. Right. So this is basically a translation of the documentation. So this is the address. Then I take a byte at that particular address and I just append it into the stack so the program can actually manipulate that thing. So to store this entire thing, uh, I need to pop the byte. Then I need to pop an address. And then I'm going to do uh, address and save that byte at that specific address. Though this is a rather interesting. So what we're doing in assembly, we're actually truncating the value, right? We're actually truncating the value. If we take a look at the assembly, right? Zero four. Um, so when we do uh, racks, yeah, as you can see, we're loading the value in RBX, which is 64 bit number uh but we're actually moving bl right so we're basically taking the lower byte we're truncating no matter how big this entire thing is we're always taking its lower byte so and we need to somehow simulate this entire thing uh in the, in the python right in the simulation mode i think the easiest way to simulate that in python is going to be um do a mod of 255 i think that's the easiest thing to do all right um so uh, when I load the thing, I don't have to do that. When I store, uh, on the other hand, um, I think I have to do it like this. So this is not going to buy. This is going to be a value. And then I have to do something like mod uh, 0xff. And I'm not sure in Python, can I do stuff like that? Uh, mod. OK, so it, it does work. So essentially, I just only take the lower binding here. Uh, so. 
<clears throat> and I think we implemented this entire stuff. Um, right, so we have a memory and we have a load in store operation, so we can manipulate this entire stuff. Uh, two, 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 two. Alrighty, 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 alrighty. So there's no push. I keep confusing push and append, and I think it hangs. And I know why it hangs, because in the simulation mode, you're supposed to advance the uh, instruction pointer yourself, right? So you're supposed to advance it yourself. There we go. Uh, there we go. Pop is not defined, and this is because it's a stack pop. Uh, do we have anything else? Okay, cool. The simulation works, but we have no idea if um, if it actually like worked correctly. Right, if it actually worked correctly. Uh, you could do end uh, 0x. Yeah, I could actually do that. Uh, so, wait a second, where was that? I could do it like this. Right. It's pretty much the same thing in this particular case, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like this. I think it makes sense. Thank you. Um, now, we need a way to dump the memory, if you know what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, we can try to dump it right now, um, after the execution after the execution is done, uh, just to see. So this is going to be memory. And let's not dump everything. Let's actually dump only the first 100 bytes, uh, maybe even 10, because we're not really writing too much. And just see. OK, so here in the simulation mode, in the memory, we have BCD. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so this is how we can see what's going on in the memory. So our thing works in both um, simulation and a compilation which is pretty cool it works in a simulation and in a compilation but you know what would be cooler it would be pretty cool if i could just take this buffer and print it to the standard output if you know what i'm talking about so and to be fair it is relatively easy to do uh, in a low level assembly you just to use the right syscall right you just have to use the right syscall Mm, and write syscall accepts the uh, the file descriptor of the stream into which you want to write thing, the pointer to the beginning of the buffer, and the amount of characters that you want to write. So you just make the syscall, uh, given it this buffer, and it will print it. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to work with syscalls in our language. And this is something that I would like to add next. I want to be able to do the following thing. Okay, so file descriptor. I want to print to standard output. The standard output is one, so I'm going to put one in here. So the buffer, I know buffer starts at memory, so I'm going to put mem in here. And the amount of characters I want to print is three. So the amount of arguments of this syscall is three. Right, this is the amount of arguments. This is a three, and this is the uh, amount of characters that I want to print. So, and uh, what's the syscall number for the write? Um, Linux syscall table. So let me actually quickly find it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So Chromium OS. Mm -hmm. So write syscall, write syscall is one. Okay. So I push all of this stuff into the stack. I might as well actually annotate it. Mm, so this is uh, FD, uh, simpc. Uh, this is buff. Uh, this is the count. This is the um, amount of amount uh, of arguments of the syscall the syscall number, and then I want to introduce a very simple operation, syscall, right? So, and what this operation will do, right, it will take the syscall number, then it will take n next arguments and actually perform the syscall, right? And that way we'll be able to, uh, to interact with the operating system from our language. And after we introduce uh, procedures and some ways of abstractions, we'll be able to tuck all of the syscalls under some convenient function calls, so you don't have to work with them directly, but we'll have a mechanism to interact with the operating system. It's going to be a basis, basis for our standard library or something like that. And it's not that hard to implement. You see? 
Like, we already have everything to implement that. We just need a new syscall operation that is, you know, that is doing that. Does it make sense? I think it's pretty cool. And after that, we'll be able to actually, like, yeah, this entire thing will just print the contents of the uh, of the memory. Um, I think that's cool. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but before we go and implement the syscalls, uh, I think we need to do a committee committee. Um, right. Let's do a committee committee. <clears throat> Someone please explain the numbering system of the editor. The numbers are relative. So basically it shows the current number, but then up and down it shows the relative number. So here is the five uh, lines up from the current one and here is the 10 lines down from the current one. And the reason why it is numbered like that is because um, Emacs and also Vim, by the way, Vim also has this entire feature as well, uh, has uh, command repetitions, right? It has command repetitions. And that means if I want to jump to these lines, this line, I know that I have to repeat uh, up five times. And there we go, I jumped here. Now I want to jump to this line. So I know that I have to repeat down 16 times and I actually jumped here. So it allows me to navigate faster. All right, so uh, let's commit whatever we have already. Mm, so I kind of want to have a way to uh, Pigeon PI3. Thank you so much for tier one subscription. Your first subscription, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and welcome to our epic assembly club. Mm, never knew the reason for the relative line numbering. That's the reason. And you can see relative numbers, people using relative numbers in Vim as well, and they're using it in Vim for the same reason because Vim also has command repetitions. So it, it is actually rather convenient. Um, you can not use relative numbers, but then if you have a big file, which has thousands of lines, jumping between like local lines becomes a nightmare, right? So if you have thousands of lines, you have to type, you, you, you don't even know how to repeat anything, right? So you maybe, maybe you can use absolute values, but then you'll have to type four numbers instead of like up to two. So it just makes it more convenient. Um, Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, and, and you don't have to do any math in your head, that's for sure. Um, all right. <clears throat> so I want to be able to dump the memory in a simulation mode. Um, but the question is, is there any convenient way for me to do that? Right, uh, we can introduce the flag, something like dump memory, right? And by default, it's gonna be false. Uh, but if you set this entire thing um, to true, we're gonna print the memory. But the question is how much memory do we wanna print, right? How much memory? Uh, so, because the size of the memory in the simulation is 64 kilobytes and printing all of that to the screen is just like not feasible in my opinion. So, what I'm thinking is that maybe the user will be able to customize the range of the memory to print, um, but I don't know. Uh, so I think I'm gonna actually put a to-do in here and think about that later. Uh, so for now, for debug purposes, we can always like dump it ourselves. Um, Mm -hmm. To do introduce uh, an option to dump the final state of the memory of the memory in the simulation mode um, for debug purposes. For debug purposes, I'll think about that. Um, okay, so uh, let's -a go. Uh, let's -a go. Mm -mm -mm. Um, implement memory operation, memory access operations in simulation, in simulation mode. And I'm gonna push that, I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Um, okay. Are you using Vim key bindings in here? In Emacs, I use vanilla Emacs key bindings. Uh, when I use Vim, I use Vim key bindings as well. Right. 
All right, let's introduce the syscall, okay? Let's introduce the syscall. Um, so I think it's going to be rather interesting to do. I wonder if it's going to even work in... How are we going to do that in a simulation? Yeah, once we introduce the syscall thing, what we'll have to do, we'll have to simulate Linux. We're writing Linux kernel simulator in Python. How many people actually do that? <laughs> this is actually quite funny. Yeah. So we'll have to, in the simulation mode, we'll have to simulate Linux kernel. Um, and it's not that hard, actually. So we can just, we can only simulate certain um, syscalls, right? For now, we're going to simulate uh, only write. Um, and then we'll see. <clears throat> what else is this? This is a Linux. Mm. So this is my new fetch. Intel i5, by the way. What generation is this, by the way? Is that like four? Is that a generation? I know nothing about computers, by the way. So I just bought whatever they had in the store. So is that a good laptop? It's actually pretty shitty, I think. Um, mm -mm. So yeah, that's what I'm using. Eight gigabytes of RAM, by the way. Eight gigabytes of RAM. I also have a Nvidia GPU, but I it's so old I can't make it work on my Debian. So <laughs> yeah. So what I'm basically using right now, I'm using the Intel GPU. Uh, so and it works fine. Uh, it's a pretty good kettle. Yeah, it is in fact a pretty good kettle. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna be buying a new laptop soon, so that's for sure. Um, um, i5 came out just after Pentium in 1996 or so. Really? I don't know. I bought this laptop like eight years ago, I think. Yeah. I bought it after I graduated from uni. Mm. Mm -mm. As long as it gets the job done, yes. Mm -mm. <sighs> <sighs> all right, so uh, let me let me see how we're gonna implement all of that stuff. So I'm gonna start with. Uh, updating the documentation. So we have a memory and uh, system. Mm, system. And, uh, this one is going to be syscall. Um, mm, how do you enjoy your new chair? It's actually quite good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, perform the syscall. Uh, how I'm going to actually. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to show the signature or something, uh, but I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so this is going to be the arguments, right? So we have our arguments. Then what I decided to do, actually, I don't remember. Uh, so this is the arguments, then uh, um, args len, uh, then syscall number and then the syscall. So this is how you're supposed to use it, right? So it's basically like a very addict thingy, um, some sort of a very addict thingy. So we have a syscall number. Um, maybe I can, I can try to annotate it like so. Syscall number, so it's going to be pop. Uh, args len, also pop. And then for i in range, args len um, pop uh, arg we're popping the arg uh, one two three four uh, popping the args mm -hmm. and something like add uh, to uh, hmm, how to say that um, move arg to ith um, register according according to the call convention to the call convention um, and then perform perform the syscall. So this is basically how how we do that. So that's the that's the algorithm. Um, syscall number. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I think I wanted to actually do it like like this, right? Um, hmm. Move Cisco number to the uh, corresponding register. Okay. okay, so that's basically the algorithm. That's basically the algorithm. So associating the different registers. So the call convention is rather straightforward, all right? The first argument goes into RDI, then RSI, RDX, R10, R8, and R9. And as far as I know, kernel does not accept any floating point numbers, right? So it doesn't care about every, uh, this kind of stuff. And the rest of the arguments, if it needs more, I suppose you pass them via the stack. But I'm also not sure about that. So I think we can only support uh, five arguments for now. And if you need more, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Mm -mm. The order of the arguments in the commutation is wrong. Uh, okay. So if it's wrong and that will break our language, um, we'll fix it separately. For now, um, RDI, RSI, and RDX is correct order for the for the right syscall. And I know that because I uh, run this syscall multiple of times. So if it breaks for any other syscalls in here, we can fix it separately later. So yeah, that's gonna be basically the thing. So I don't think it's a showstopper if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. As long as something works, everything else can be easily fixed later. Um, Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and introduce the syscall operation. Mm -hmm. Syscall uh, IOTA. Uh, in my documentation it is incorrect. Ah, I see. So let me take a look. Uh, the syscall number. So the first thing should be the syscall. Okay, so that's the syscall number. Okay, then amount of arguments. Uh huh. And oh, I suppose we have to actually iterate them in a. D okay. Maybe, maybe like this. Yeah, I guess we have to do them like this. Yeah. So you, as a user, will have to put them like that. Uh, do I do mentoring? No, I do not do mentoring. I'm really sorry. Uh, I feel like mentoring people is too much responsibility. So I just don't want to take this kind of responsibility. I'm really sorry. Um, okay, 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 okay. Uh, so Cisco, but if you have any questions, you may try to ask them. And especially if you ask a question with a donation link. I will do my best to answer it on the stream. Uh, so I do this kind of mentoring, if that's even called mentoring. Mm. How do we edit multiple lines? I'm using multiple cursors extension. Emacs multiple, multiple cursors. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm using this extension. Mm. I'm gonna put it in the description for people who's watching on YouTube. Uh, so this is gonna be description. Uh -huh. Multiple cursors extension extension for Emacs. There we go. Okay. Uh, so we have a syscall. Let's try to compile the entire thing. Uh, so I'm going to do the compilation of our nation. And here, so we need to increase uh, to 16. I definitely need to move this entire thing into a map, right? So it has to be some sort of a dictionary. Uh, yeah. Return uh, type OPC call. Uh, location is in here. There we go. Uh, here's another one, and this is a cross referencing. It does not affect cross referencing. Next one. Uh, compilation. Okay, so the compilation is rather interesting. Uh, two, 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 two. All right. Okay. L if op uh, type op uh, syscall. 
Mm, have you read SICP? I read first chapter of SICP. For, for those who doesn't know, SICP is a pretty cool book. Um, right, Structure Interpretation of Computer Programs, and it's actually free. You can find it in here. Uh, right, and I'm gonna put this thing in the description. I managed to read only first chapter. Uh, my problem with this book is that it feels like it's written for children. <laughs> Uh, it contains a lot of useful information, uh, I do acknowledge that, but it's extremely painful to read because like, I do feel like it's written for children, which is not that far for truth, because it was written like for first year MIT students, if I understand correctly, so it, it's basically written for children. Uh, so if you are um, a CS student, right, like a first year, second year, or so on and so forth, you may find it interesting, but I... I think I'm too old. <laughs> I think I'm too old for this uh, for this book. So the second one is HTTP. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, HTTP book. How to design programs. Never read this one. Uh, an introduction to programming and computing. I never read this one. This sounds interesting. First edition is still available. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put this thing. Uh, HT in the description and uh, then I'm gonna have it as a reminder to myself to uh, to maybe check it out later I didn't know about this one is it also free I like free shit um, okay how to program uh, fixed size data arbitrary large data abstraction so I just want to get the gist of what's written in there abstract abstraction from examples it's also uh, lisp thingy but I guess it's fine I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm reading the right thing. Um, okay. Right. Mm, did Russian university teach you a lot about computer science? No, it did not. Uh, I did everything pretty much myself. Um, unfortunately, I went to a pretty shitty university, so it didn't teach me shit. You can use libc bindings for syscall in python simulation instead of doing it yourself but what if i'm gonna be running this kind of stuff on uh, windows mm. so i think i want to simulate uh, syscalls anyway just in case i'm gonna be running it on operating system that do not support this kind of syscalls and maybe we're gonna introduce some flags uh, telling what kind of operating system to emulate i think that's gonna be interesting um okay anyways uh so let's uh, go mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um how we're gonna be approaching this entire stuff oh boy oh boy where is my soy What's interesting is that the amount of arguments, the amount of arguments is a thing that is kind of has to be known at compile time, if you know what I'm talking about. It kind of has to be known at compile time. Because if you make it a runtime value, right, if you make it a runtime value, that means you will need to compile in a loop that loops around and just feeds this entire stuff into these things, which is kind of ridiculous in my opinion. Um, so I don't really want to do that. So, but syntactically, it's going to be kind of difficult to, you know, parse, right? Maybe it's going to be syscall three, but now I have to parse this kind of stuff like syscall and then the amount of arguments in here and then organize the loop and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, I have an idea. To get things going, let's actually introduce not syscall, but syscall3, <laughs> which allows you to only do syscall with three arguments. Uh, for the rest of the things, we can do syscall1 and syscall2. <laughs> you, you can't have more than five arguments anyway, so it's not that hard to hard code. You know what I'm talking about? Like, well, I mean six of them. So you, you only have, uh, need to have like six syscalls in here. So it's, it's just easier to parse within the current system. 
You know what I'm talking about? It's just like easier to parse, right? You only have to hard code six of them. It's it's nothing. Like and then later we can introduce like a proper syntax that accepts like something like this, okay? So yeah, you need to learn how to cut corners. This is the art of cutting corners. Okay, because right now I just want to have something that lets me call the right syscall. So I'm going to just do that. Um. <clears throat> uh, and we can improve it later. So always be closing. Uh, so this is going to be syscall 3, right? Syscall 3. Seems like a good choice. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, let me see what we can do. So I'm going to actually go to here. Uh, so this is going to be Azum. Really Azum. Okay. So there we go. Hmm. Uh, to, 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 to. So the count is three, mem, one, uh, and then. I, I do the syscall name and then I do syscall3. There we go. So that basically prints ABC, right? It prints ABC. Then I do that again and this will uh, print BCD. So the final result, the final output of this program should be ABC, uh, BCD, right? If we did everything correctly. Um, okay, go. So now I'm going to try to recompile this entire thing and it fails with uh, this stuff. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So load program, uh, I think it was parse token as OP, uh, so syscall3, syscall3, there we go. So it doesn't know anything about syscall3. Mm -mm. So what are we doing, what are we doing? I'm gonna pop Rex because that's the, uh, that's where the uh, syscall number goes, then write pop uh, rdx, right, so this is the third argument, then rsi, and then uh, rdi, and then we do the syscall. There we go. You see how easy this to implement now? Super easy. Uh, so you just pop the things in a particular order and just perform the syscall. Um, so that's pretty cool. Hmm. I really like that. Okay. Uh, so, all right. Okay. There's nothing uh, else left, to be fair. There's nothing else left. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is just try to run the entire program. And if we did everything correctly, it should print ABC, BCD. And it didn't. Cool. I'm really happy. Uh, all right, so let's see what the fuck has happened. Uh, I'm gonna do four. Uh, did it actually perform any syscalls? I wonder. Well, it does try to perform the syscalls. Um, mm, push three. Uh -huh. Maybe we did that uh, in a not correct order, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Sun 3 thank you, thank you so much for 1,000 beats, holy fucking shit, thank you for thousand dollars, I really appreciate that. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Okay, let's take a look at what the fuck is going on. Um, so, this is right, and FD standard output, right, what is the standard output? I think it's one, so it must be three, All right, so this is the count. All right, this must be three. Uh, memory. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think I did it in the wrong order. That's true. I think I did it in the wrong order. Uh, so it has to be Rex, then RDI, right? Since this is where, okay, so and then RSI and then RDX. Okay, I can see that now. Yeah, it only required 1000 bits to actually find the error. Thank you so much. Right, so, uh, okay, and let's try to now run the application and first try. So now we can perform syscalls from our language that accept three arguments. That's pretty cool. So we can do like different manipulations. 
and stuff like that. Uh, what does this program do, Porth? Uh, Porth is a programming language. It compiles uh, programs written in Porth programming language into executables. That's what it does. So you can find the source code of uh, this program in here. And uh, for people who's watching it on uh, YouTube, you can find it in the description. Mm, Sasco. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool. Um, now, uh, let me take a look. Let me take a look. So this is not a syscall anymore. Uh, perform syscall uh, with three arguments. <laughs> so we don't have a uh, arglen anymore, right? Mm -mm. Move syscall number to the corresponding register. Uh, okay, so I suppose this has to be something like Three, uh, move args to i register according to the call a convention, perform the call. Okay, so we're gonna do it like that for now. Mm -hmm. Rewrite the implicit exit. This is actually a pretty cool idea. Yes, we can try to do that. Uh, but to do that, we'll need a syscall2 uh, electric boogaloo. Uh, actually, syscall1, I think. Right, because exit um, accepts uh -huh. accepts one exit code. Okay, so let's do something like um, syscall one. Perform the uh, perform a syscall a syscall uh, with one argument, right? And this is essentially something like this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're gonna fix that later, okay? So we just needed to get things going, all right? Uh, so, and then... Mm, so let's go ahead and compile the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be 17. Uh, this one will require something like this. Syscall 1. Uh -huh. This one doesn't require anything. And the compilation, right? So the compilation. <laughs> Syscall one, so yeah. So it's a Rax and RDI. Uh -huh. Seems to be working. And here is the interesting thing. We can now test this entire stuff. Uh, so after we printed ABC, we can try to print, uh, we can actually try to exit with the 69's code. So this is the exit code, and then we have to supply the, um, the syscall number. This is going to be 60, and this is going to be syscall 1. Uh, there we go. So it shouldn't print the full thing. Uh, there we go. It printed ABC, but it didn't exit with the 69 syscall. Which is kind of sus, don't you think? Uh, all right, so if I comment out this entire thing, it printed everything. Uh, all right, so let me see where did I make a mistake. Uh, to, 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 to RDI, so it's a 60. Uh -huh. All right. Pop Rex, pop RDI, Cisco. I don't know why I didn't didn't do things. It's supposed to like exit with non-zero exit code, but it just like didn't want to do that. Hmm. All right. So let's take a look at the generated assembly. Uh -huh. So where is the 69? Push 60. Uh, Jeremy, thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Your first subscription, by the way, and welcome to our Epic Assembly Club. Mm. Uh, that saucer just up. Okay, sure. Uh, thank you so much. I don't know, man, I don't know. This is really strange. Uh, push 69, push 60, and then pop rex uh, 60 goes into that and then rdi to 69 and then syscall but it's just like it didn't work properly for some reason uh 
why didn't it work? This is really, really sus. Um, we can try to, I don't know, uh, debug that. So let's actually put uh, the exit right here, right? Let's put the exit right here. And uh, as you can see, it just says that it's finished without any problems, right? But it has to finish with the exit code of 69. Um, so tests, uh, 04 memory, uh, we're gonna break at start and I'm gonna run the entire thing, layout assembly. Maybe I also wanna show the registers. I think it's gonna be very useful. Okay, uh, and I, so we push uh, this thing onto the stack and now in racks, we should see uh, 60, right? So here's a 60 and RDI is uh, 69, okay? So, and then we perform the syscall and it exited with this exit code, right? So everything's fine. And if I, if I try to test 04 memory, um, and then I take a look. Oh, it exited with 69. Ah, I know what is going on. I'm running the application through minus R code. So it's exit code of this script, right? So the script runs this program and swallows the exit code of the program. So if I run the program there, okay, I see now. I, I was trying to fix an uh, imaginary bug. There we go. So it's exit code 69. Okay, so everything's fine. There is no bug in here. Fucking classic. Freaking classic. Mm. The thing that guts me is like, in which language do you write your language? I'm writing my language in Python, right? So that's... This is the language that I'm using. Python 3 specifically. Uh, yeah, so... You can find the source code of this language in here. There is explanation uh, on how it works. It generates assembly, um, assembly file that then compiles, compiled into a native executable. So my uh, Python script basically generates this, right? It generates this kind of assembly um, from my language. So that's how I do that. Mm, all right, um, let's continue. Everything seems to be okay, but I still want to have like an explicit exit anyway, right? At the end of the application. Um, but it's nice to have an ability to just exit at any point. I think, I think it's kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, now we're able to, to do this kind of stuff. A, B, C, B, C, D. Uh, and we can even use that for testing, right? We can even use that for testing. Uh, so the problem here is that uh, this doesn't work for the simulation, right? So we also need to implement the syscalls for the simulation. So this is going to be 60. Uh, this is going to be 60. And uh, L if op uh, type op syscall1. Um, it's going to be assert uh, false not implemented. L if op type op syscall3 assert false not implemented. There we go. Uh, all right, so I forgot to do that. So this is going to be 18, right? Or 17. Okay, so now it fails at not implemented. So it tries to perform the syscall3. Uh, oh boy. Okay, so we're gonna have a syscall number, right? So this is gonna be stack pop. Then um, we're going to have arg1, uh, then arg2, and arg3. Uh, that's what we have on here arg1, arg2, arg3. So if uh, syscall number is equal to 1, we're gonna perform the write. We're gonna perform the write, and how we're we gonna be doing that? That's very interesting. So uh, we can do the following thing. So if so, arg one, if I understand correctly, is fd, then the buffer, basically address and the size of this thing. So the string that we want to print is actually uh, arg two, arg two plus uh, arg three. So that's the thing we want to print, 
right? So it's relatively easy to actually get. Uh, and depending on arg1, if arg1 is equal to 1, we have to do that for uh, the standard output. So this entire thing also prints the new line, and I think you can suppress that uh, in, IP in Python, right? So if we take a look at the print. Uh, and yeah, you can say that end is going to be uh, end is going to be nothing, right? So this is going to be nothing. Uh, and if arg one is equal to, you're supposed to use um, file sys std error. So now you can print that into std error. Uh, else. Um, Mm -mm -mm. We're gonna assert false uh, unknown um, file descriptor, right? A known file descriptor, and we're gonna put that file descriptor in here. So this is gonna be arg1. Uh, and all right, and then um, l if uh, actually else uh, assert false. Uh, unknown syscall number d arg actually syscall number I, th I feel like to simplify things around I want to do the following stuff fd arg1 then buff arg2 and then count arg3 so then when I'm talking about arg1 I can do fd uh, when I'm talking about this kind of stuff arg2 right I'm talking about buff and when I'm talking about arc3, I'm talking about count. And um, so I can also do s, which is, this is basically what I want to print, right? So this is s, and this is going to be like that. There we go. So I just implemented the right syscall. Mm. All right, so uh, two, 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 two. let's give it a try, I suppose. Uh, pop from empty list. This one is interesting, actually. Why? Huh, why did it pop from the empty list? Uh, uh -huh. Did I forget to... Oh, I know why. Because I forgot to, up, uh, you know, advance the um, this thing. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> nice one, by the way. Um, I suppose one of the things we want to do in here is probably convert this entire stuff into a string. Uh, and that didn't help much, unfortunately. Um, okay, so let me see how to do that. Python bytes array to string. Convert bytes to a string. Okay, so how do you do that? I didn't. I know nothing about Python, so uh, decode. Okay, so let's do decode, and let's assume UTF-8 because why not? There we go. We have a simulation of our nation. And if I try to compile the entire thing and run, it produces the same output. Okay, cool. We basically simulated like a small portion of the like Linux kernel for whatever reason. Um, so, yeah. We could probably use whatever comes with the Python. People in the chat say that you can actually call the syscall from uh, like syscalls from Python. But a cool thing about this stuff is that it will work on Windows as well. The compilation probably won't work on Windows, but simulation will. Uh, so yeah, which is kind of cool, I guess. Um, it's not that important anyway. So just like simulation is more of a like check things without actually compiling them. All right, uh, so uh, I have a test script, right? So I have a pretty cool test script, which basically tests the output discrepancies between the simulation and compilation. What it does, it collects the output of the simulation, then compiles your program and collects the output of the compiled program, and then just compares the, their outputs and reports an error if there is a discrepancy. And it does that for each individual test. So now uh, we edit a new test for the memory, right? And uh, with this script, we can ensure that simulation and uh, compilation produce the same output, right? So this is going to be test pi, and as you can see, everything is fine. Uh, so we can actually go back to, um, you know, not encoding anything. 
Right, so let's actually put it like this and try to test it now. And it will complain that uh, output discrepancy between simulation and compilation for this specific thing. So simulation output, compilation output. Uh, right, so, and that's the problem. So uh, I don't have a CI yet, but I'm going to be running this thing on CI at some point. Right. Mm, alrighty, that's pretty cool. Uh, so technically, by the way, technically, you should be able already write a hello world in this language. <laughs> Believe it or not. Uh, we can try to do that. Test. <laughs> Guess how I'm going to be writing hello world. Hello world. Porth. Uh, okay, so... Uh, let me see. Uh, hello world. Uh -huh. X, X, D. All right. Uh, okay, so we're gonna take that shit. We don't support hex yet, but uh, technically it should be possible. Um, zero X, zero X. Um, and you know what? I think I'm gonna form a list out of that. Right, I'm going to form a list out of that uh, and just grab this entire thing, put it back to back, uh, right, like so. So here are the codes of the, uh, of the hello world, right? Uh, and essentially what we need to do in here is just memory uh, zero plus, right, and at the end of this entire thing we want to uh, write that into the memory. So in here we want to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, and we can align uh, plus. Oh shit! Uh, align rejects plus. Align this thing. There we go. So and after that I can do, um, I suppose, count, which is going to be thirteen mem1 one, uh, 1 syscall3 there we go so this is a hello world <laughs> uh, so yeah this is gonna be the hello world and let's see if it's gonna actually work uh, so the, the language is at a very early stage of development. It doesn't really have uh, many capabilities, but the way we achieve hello world is essentially uh, we write hello world into memory byte by byte sequentially, right? And then uh, we call the syscall on that buffer of memory. Right, so again, the language is only starting. We only started developing it, so it doesn't have that many like abstraction capabilities. So we're only forming the basis of the language. Uh, right, so, and that should actually work, technically. So let's try to simulate it first. So this is going to be port, test, uh, test, 0, 05, uh, hello world. And as you can see, it printed hello world. Uh, we can try to compile the entire thing. Right, so we're going to compile it. And then if we try to run, uh, this entire thing, it also brings hello world. So we can take a look at the, uh, at the final thing. Uh, right, so, and basically it prints um, each character one by one. Why are you adding them though? Uh, who I'm adding? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, two, 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 two. Yeah, yeah, so I'm actually basically upsetting, right? So because the mem, uh, points at the beginning of the buffer, right? And I'm ups upsetting by one character. Maybe I can actually do something about that. Um, right. So I can start with memory, then I can duplicate it. All right, I can duplicate it, then uh, put a character A and write it. Then I can try to add one, right? Uh, I'm adding one, duplicating and writing again. Uh, that might work actually. Yeah. So I can start with memory and I can keep duplicating and adding one, uh, keep duplicating and adding one. So maybe that will make it slightly better. Um, so I can rename this entire stuff one plus dupe. 
right, and then something like that. Uh, Hamikovi gifted a tier one sub to Nafli. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, gifting a tier one sub. And Nafli, welcome to our epic club. Okay, so this is gonna be memory. I wonder if this is going to work. So we're starting with that, and then plus one, and then plus one, and so on and so forth. And then maybe we'll be able to even compute the size of the of this buffer by subtracting the current thing uh, from the beginning of the buffer. Okay, this is actually kind of smart. I really like that. Um, all right, so let's see if it's going to work. Uh, I'm gonna try to simulate this. It actually worked, believe it or not. Uh, okay, that's cool. So that way, uh, you can easy, easily add more and more character characters in here without worrying to like invalidate any of the indices because you're just basically incrementing like sequentially. Uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so another thing I wanted to do. So right now at the top of the memory, like at the top of the stack, we have the memory, right? So then I can push mem and essentially subtract it. Right, and that will give me the length of this entire stuff. And yep, all right. So that gives me the length and then here's the buffer and here is the file descriptor and here is the write and that should also work. And that works kind of. It doesn't include the, um, the last character. So we have to do plus one, I suppose. Right, okay, so yeah, well, we need to do extra plus one for, for it to work properly. But now I can just add more of these things, right, and it will automatically work, as you can see. So just, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, I really like that. <laughs> uh, so that's, 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 that's neat. It's very neat. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, and we can check if there is any discrepancy between simulation and yeah, there's no discrepancy, so everything seems to be working fine. All right, that's pretty pogue. Uh, I really like that. I really, really like that. Uh, okay, so mm -hmm. I included that, and I need to come up with the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we implemented syscall support, right? So that's what we did. Implement, uh, implement syscalls support. All right, and let's uh, also remove this entire stuff. And I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Okay, that's pretty cool. So our language became more powerful. We can even interact with the operating system. Holy fucking shit. Isn't that exciting? I think it's gonna be fucking exciting. So yeah, um, even though it's kind of lame, I do realize that, um, you know, <laughs> putting the character one by one into the buffer is in fact very lame. But in the future, I actually plan to have pretty cool uh, capabilities, right? So I wanna add, um, of course, I'm gonna add string literals. So you will be able to do something like hello world. Uh, right, hello world, and then something like 13, hello world, then 1, 1, syscall 3, and this is going to be just hello world, so when it encounters the um, string literal, it will put it into the data segment, and this entire thing will just push the the address of this thing into, um, into the stack, so it's going to be as simple as that. But there is another thing that I wanted to try. Uh, at some point, we're going to introduce compile time execution, so essentially, uh, when you surround uh, this entire thing with comp, something like comp, right? Instead of compiling this entire thing, it will first execute this uh, at compile time using simulation, right? And then it will take a snapshot of the memory after execution at compile time and it will bake it into the memory. So then uh, whatever program at runtime tries to access the memory, it will see this data baked at compile time. Right, so I plan to do something like that, but it's not going to be uh, in the near future. So if you want to initialize memory in a particular way, right, if you have an algorithm that fills up the memory a particular way, uh, you can wrap it in compilation things and it will just bake it uh, as that. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, right. But for this kind of thing, it's, it would be easier to just have string literals and we're going to have string literals in the future. That's for sure. Uh, all right, so this is... 
Okay, I pushed everything. Uh, you can check the source code of the project uh, we're developing in here in the chat. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can find the source code in here, right? And for those who's watching on Twitch right now, you uh, can find the recordings of these sessions uh, in this channel in the chat. All right, so today was a pretty productive session, not gonna lie, I really enjoyed it. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now, I really appreciate it. Have a good one and I see you all on the next session. Uh, so check out all of the links and stuff like that. Thank you so much for all of the subscriptions, for all of the donations, for all of the bits. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, have a good one. Uh, love you all.